What's up guys and welcome to Friday Flights, Gale Super Loose RGB Memory Edition. If you are a fan of the channel, you know I am a major enthusiast for craft beer and cocktails. It's in the name of the channel. But I usually don't let the beers take center stage on the channel. This is a tech channel first and a beer channel second. However, this show is going to be a little bit different today. I want to draw your attention to the Rogue Out of Line IPA. This is a brand new IPA for my friends over at Rogue Brewing in Newport, Oregon. There's two reasons I want to talk about the beer on this episode. Number one, it's a brand new beer from Rogue. In fact, this is the first batch of cans that they've made of this, and so I am really looking forward to trying this. And number two, be sure to catch my live show, Talking Heads, every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific for the latest in beer and tech news, and especially watch it this coming week, as we're going to be giving away a prize pack from Rogue Brewery to celebrate the release of Adeline IPA. And in fact, I think I have a more appropriate glass for this. Hold on one second. There we go. That's better. So this is an IPA that clocks in at, I believe, 6.7% or 6.9%. Gosh, I should have read that before I started pouring. Uh, and it's got 66 IBUs to it, so kind of moderate on the bitterness scale of things. Should be a very drinkable IPA. I know they focus more on the tropical and the citrus notes in this, so it should be a very approachable, yet kind of hop forward flavor to it. So let's give it a shot. Definitely some citrus notes right up front on the nose. I don't want to say orange or lemon or anything like that. There's almost a, a, a light mango to that. I like that. Now onto the RAM review. <laughs> So this is the latest memory kit offering from Giel. This is the super loose DDR4 RGB kit running at 3200 megahertz. However, this one has a little bit of a trick up its sleeve. Most memory kits at 3200 megahertz are running cast latency timings in the 16, 18, 18, 36 ballpark. Uh, that's what my Patriot Viper memory up here is running. However, this one is running a little bit more aggressive timings out of the box in XMP. This is running 14, 14, 14, 34 cast latency timings. So I'm kind of excited to see, is there a difference in performance and can this memory actually clock higher than a standard 3200 megahertz kit? We're gonna test that in my i7-8700K test bench. Now I call this a test bench, but this is actually my case mod that I made for QuickCon this last year, which if you have not seen this build, go check out the build montage right up here. I promise you, you will not regret watching that video. However, this is an i7-8700K running a 1070 Ti, all water-cooled, and it's running the Patriot Viper 3200MHz RGB kit itself with the aforementioned 16, 18, 18, 36 timings. We're going to get some baseline numbers out of this memory kit running Cinebench. Then we're going to switch over to the Guile. We're going to run from 2133 all the way up to really as high as this memory kit will go and see how much performance we're going to get out of it. Let's get started. So I've got my 8700K here loaded up with a 4.7 gigahertz overclock running that Patriot Viper 3200 megahertz memory. And the memory is just using the standard XMP profile, so it's using the default timings and default speed of that. So let's just go ahead and run Cinebunch here and see where we fall. We're sitting at a pretty rock solid 4.7 gigahertz. I've got a max temperature. It's hovering between 78 degrees and 80 Celsius, so rock solid on the core temps, which means anything we do to the memory should be just fine. We're not going to lose any stability because of the CPU. There we go. I've done a number of runs now. Uh, we seem to be scoring right about 1550. This run was 1549. I think my top was 1555. So very, very consistent runs on this system. We're going to go ahead and get the memory swapped out now. Again, we're going to start at 2133 to get a baseline number for what no XMP profile at all would run at. Then we're going to turn on XMP and then we're going to see if we can crank it just a little bit higher. So the Giel memory is now installed, and as you can see, I've gone ahead and disabled XMP, so our memory is running at the default DDR4 speed of 2133. I want to run a couple of tests at this speed with our 4.7 gigahertz overclock just to see what speeds of the system will be. Then we'll turn on XMP again at 3200 megahertz at that 14, 14, 14, 34 timing, and we'll work up from there if we can. All right, so running at the same 4.7 gigahertz as before, and our memory is running at 1,066 megahertz, so we are right where we should be. Let's go ahead and run a test and see where we land. Remember, we're shooting for 1549. First test in the books, and actually a little bit of a surprising result. We got a 1538 in Cinebench, which is only 11 points off of our lowest score from the 3200 megahertz Patriot Viper. So let's go ahead and run a couple more just to make sure that's not an anomaly. There's a 1546, 
And there's our third score. We got a 1525. So 24 points below our lowest score from our 3200 megahertz kit, but not as dramatic as I was expecting. Part of this was probably because this kit is actually running at 15, 15, 15, 36 default timings at our 2133 megahertz speed. So we're actually slightly tighter timings than our 3200 megahertz Patriot Viper kit was. Kind of an interesting result to me, but let's go ahead and turn on XMP and see what that does. All right, inside of Windows, and we can see a 1600 megahertz memory clock right here, which means we are indeed running at 3200 megahertz with our 14, 14, 14, 34 timings. So XMP profile one for the win, I guess you would say. Let's go ahead and run Cinebunch on this one now and we'll see what it does. First run, we got a 1549, which matches the low score of our 3200 megahertz kit from the Patriot Viper. Let's see where the guile, Giel, Giel, it's pronounced Jeff, whatever. Let's see where the Giel lands us uh, on a couple more tests. 1563, best score of the day. And there we go, a 1549. So not a huge performance disparity between these two kits, even though we do have more aggressive timings on the Giel kit than we did on the Patriot Vipers. It really equates to about a 0.9% differential. And honestly, if it's me, that's within the margin of error for normal workflow. But let's see if we have any overclocking headroom left in this memory kit. Remember with the Patriot Viper, I was not able to get anywhere above 3200 megahertz at the XMP profile. Couldn't even get 3333 to post. Let's see if the Giel has a little bit more left in the tank. So let's just go ahead and try for 3600 right out of the gate. I'm really curious to see if we can make a 400 megahertz leap with this. We're gonna leave the 141434 timings in place because uh, that is already set up. In fact, I'm gonna leave XMP enabled and see if we can just do straight to 3600 because that'll give us our voltages and our timings all in the same profile. So let's go ahead and do that and see if we even get a post. We're just boot looping. <laughs> Didn't get a post, dang it. <laughs> Well, we tried. 400 megahertz was a little bit of a leap with no additional voltage. Let's turn the system off. Let's turn it back on. Let's see if we get something. Maybe maybe on a cold boot, it'll work. It probably won't. <laughs> nope, it keeps hanging on a 4C postcode. So it hits 4C and then it loops back through. It goes double zero and back to 4C again. So, yep. Eh. 3600, no go. At least at uh, 1.368 volts, which is what the XMP profile for this is. That's a shame. All right, let's see if we have anything left in the tank at all. Let's go 3,400. Hey, we got a post, 3,400, all right. Moving, moving right along. All right, so we have a 1,700 megahertz memory ratio now, so we're running at 3,400 megahertz. Same cast latency, 14, 14, 14, 34. Let's go ahead and run this a couple of more times. We got a 1,558 on our first run. Let's run it a couple more. 1549 and a 1557. So again, we're within the margin of error. We actually didn't score quite as high that time. Our peak at 3200 megahertz was a 1563, but we've been scoring within the same 20 to 30 points all evening, regardless of our memory speeds. So Cinebench, we're not getting great memory results as far as overclocking goes. Uh, I can't even tell if 3400 is scoring better than 3200. But the memory is rock solid stable, I will say, at least running this AVX workload. I went ahead and rebooted and set us back to 3200 megahertz since I didn't see a real performance gain with 3400, at least in Cinebench. But let's go ahead and install whatever Giel has for their RGB software because the point of buying RGB memory is to be able to program the lights however you want. And I've had some really good experience with some RGB memory software and I've had some really bad experience with it before. So let's see how Giel fares. All right, so the ASUS software, I will say, picked up the memory right away and seems to be doing a pretty decent job at applying various effects. Nice. I don't think there's honestly any more to say about the software. I know ASUS RSync does work pretty well. And like I said, it picked up the memory right away. All the effects seem to work. They all look fantastic on there. Uh, I'll lay a little bit of B-roll over the top of this while I'm talking about it. But yeah, I've got no complaints about the software. And I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, pretty impressive numbers out of the Geo kit. Uh, 3,200 megahertz, 14 cast latency. Uh, unfortunately, I can't comment too much on the price as Amazon doesn't even have the 3,200 megahertz kit listed. Uh, they do have a 32 gig kit listed, which is insanely expensive. And then Newegg does have the 16 gigabyte kit, which is what I'm using here of the 3,200 megahertz, but it's still $209. But if I go back one page and go to the 3,000 megahertz memory, 
that's only 115. So pricing, I don't know. My guess would be this is gonna land somewhere around 120 or 125. That's been where memory like this has been winding up lately, although memory prices have been falling quite a bit as of late. So keep your ear to the ground. This might drop below 120 bucks. And I think at that price point, definitely a great pickup. The RGB effects look fantastic. The software is easy to use. It's well refined because it's using Asus Arasync. So really no complaints as far as the software or the looks department goes. I wish this overclocked a little bit higher, although if I spent some time in it and really kind of tuned in some voltages, I might be able to get a little bit more out of it, but nothing over 3400 megahertz was really achievable. But overall, solid memory kit that I would absolutely recommend. Thank you so much for watching this one, guys. I know it was a little bit of a shorter episode, but make sure you tune in to Talking Heads next Wednesday, which is February 27th at 8 p.m. Pacific time. Latest in beer and tech news and your chance to win a prize pack from Rogue Brewing in Newport, Oregon. And as far as the Rogue Out of Line IPA, fantastic addition to their already very impressive lineup. You can have this beer pretty much any time of year, drink it on a summer day, or as I'm doing in the middle of February when it's freezing outside. No complaints at all. Thank you guys so much for watching this one, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. One of the scary things about this Dishonored build is the loudest component in here when the fans are ramped down like this, because the fans run at 600 RPM at idle, is actually the water in the reservoir. So all I hear if the pump picks up slightly is just a trickle of water. You can kind of hear the fans, but the water dripping into the reservoir is louder than all of that. And it freaks me the heck out, man. <laughs>